beginning to look a lot like tarantulas. Hello tarantula lovers. Yes, I have an unboxing to do today. Um, this is my Christmas present that I just got in. And uh, before I get started with that though, I wanted to give a very, very huge thank you to Exotic Slayer. I mentioned him in my last video and uh, he sent some traffic my way and the results have been overwhelming. Um, I believe that video got 20,000 likes within the first day and uh, I gained 300 subscribers within the first couple of days of, of posting that video. Um, so that's, that's a very overwhelming feeling. I thank you very much Exotic Slayer for sending the traffic my way. And I thank you subscribers for subscribing to my channel and appreciating what I do, <clears throat> new and old. So thank you very much. Um, that was a very overwhelming experience. Also, I wanted to thank those of you that purchased um, the Christmas spiders. Uh, it was a really cool thing. We pretty much sold out of all of the Christmas spiders that we had made. So that day when the video was up, um, we were selling them like hotcakes. And uh, my wife and I actually sat down and started making more. And they were selling as we were making them. We were making them. I would take a picture. We would post it online. And next thing you know, they would sell. So that was a really cool thing. So once again, thank you so much, Exotic Slayer, for sending traffic my way. I really appreciate it. Okay, so yeah, I wanna go ahead and get this opened up and make sure that everybody's okay. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to let you know that I ordered these from Nature's Exquisite Creatures and I ordered them during their Black Friday sale, which I got 25% off, which was a great deal. And um, one thing that I really didn't pay much attention to and I really wasn't worried about it was that if you ordered during their Black Friday sale, your name got automatically put into a drawing for some free tarantulas and um, I won <laughs> and I was shocked. They contacted me, they said, hey, you won our drawing and we're sending you some free tarantulas with your order. So that just made this even better. Um, so uh, I believe there are two Dolicothelia diamantinensis which were produced by them. They posted a picture on Facebook. They had an egg sac, the successful egg sac that they had um, a bunch of babies from. Um, I think there are two Tarinochylus murinus, which are also known as OBTs, orange bitey things. And those are my first OBTs. I have not bought an OBT yet, but um, there's some in here. And uh, Brocky Pelma Bacons. So um, five really cool tarantulas that I'm getting for free in this package. So let me go ahead and get this opened up. Alright, so let me go ahead and unzip this. I've got my handy dandy little exacto knife here. There we go. Sealed up pretty good there. Get that out of the way. Pop that open. <clears throat> Alright, so here we go. So, yes, nature's exquisite creatures. There's their card. I highly recommend them. I've ordered from them before. The first time I ordered from them, I ordered, um, I think, my communal, my M. Balfouri communal, and I ordered some Delicatheli diamantinensis from them. So uh, I already have those, and, and they did come from them, and I'm getting some more, so that's cool. All right, so you've got your typical styrofoam packing in here, and we got some paper that's holding everything in. And it's nice and warm in here, it's very toasty. All right, because we do have a heat pack there. All right, and I'm going to move this aside because this is the one that I was really looking forward to. And I got a bunch of little tiny vials here. So that means that these guys are tiny, tiny guys. All right. All right, and I should have 13 tarantulas in here. Unlucky for some, lucky for me. All right, let's see, there's one left there. Make sure there's nothing else. All right, and there's a little heat pack right there. Set that aside. And let's take a look. I've got one, two that I ordered, yes. And 
Oh, that's a different one there. That's not bad. Okay, and let's see. One, two, three. Four of those. All right, that goes with that. That goes with that. And these are Dolicotheles, put those there. Bacons. And what is this? I'll rot them. Okay, so there we go. All right, so what are we looking at here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and number thirteen. All right, so they're all here. I'm going to go ahead and open them up, make sure everybody's okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the Terenokylos murinus, the OBTs. And um, they're in these tiny vials right here, so I'm kind of worried that I might have um, over thought the box here. I was going to put them in this larger box because um, they're prolific webbers and they will web everything up and I don't want to do a whole lot of moving with them um, because of course they do tend to be very defensive and they're very fast so I'm kind of worried about that and I want to make sure that I give them plenty of room and size or room to grow so that when they get some size on them then I can transfer them to a larger enclosure. And, uh, but I'm hoping that they're not so tiny that I gotta worry about them getting out of the holes. So I'm gonna have to judge that once I open up the first one. Now I've never had an OBT. Um, these are actually my first OBTs. And uh, it's kind of interesting because when I first was getting into the hobby, um, o OBTs were actually still or readily available even back then. And it was a thing where, um, where I looked at them and I kind of wanted them but I, it seems like I was always discouraged from getting them because they are so defensive and they're so fast. Um, it seems like everybody would say, you don't need an OBT, OBTs are the devil. So anyway, um, I had kind of shied away from OBTs, but later on when I did get into the um, old world tarantulas, um, I never bought an OBT because it was a thing where they were so readily available that I was always like, oh, I'll get one next time, I'll get one next time. But every time I saw them, I would always see something I wanted more and <laughs> something that was not so common. So I ended up not getting OBTs. But um, when I did make this order, it was kind of cool because if you ordered over $75, I think, you could choose a freebie. And one of the freebies was an OBT. So I looked at the other freebies. I think they had a um, Delicothelia diamantinensis and they also had a um, Avicularia avicularia. So I've already got those and I've never had an OBT so I decided I wanted to get an OBT and that was gonna be my first OBT. But um, kind of a cool thing is that I had a subscriber buy some roaches from me and when he bought the roaches from me he threw in a little bit of extra money and he said that that was a little donation for my tarantula fund. So with that money I purchased an, another OVT so he bought me my first OVT. So in his honor Cody Ferris I'm gonna name it Cody. So let's open up Cody. All right, so here we go. And they're in these tiny vials, and I am hoping that they're not gonna be so small that I can't keep them in this larger enclosure. Oh, that's hard to open. There we go. Okay, so we got that open, let's pop that. Get my tweezers. Okay, so let's start unwrapping this, and let's hope they are not super tiny. Oop, there he is. He's on my hand. And guess what I don't have on me? A freaking catch cup. Alright, go down. Go down, little guy.
There we go. All right. So there is Cody the OBT. Can y'all see that? He's so tiny. I'm not, there he is. All right, so there's my first OBT. And yeah, he ran all over the place. There he is. And I think they're going to be just fine in this. Uh, didn't make the holes that big, so I don't think he'll be able to squeeze through that. All right, so there's OBT number one. All right. OBT number two. So little did I know that I was going to end up with four OBTs. I only thought I was getting into two. So this is an OBT Christmas, huh? All right, we got that open. got my catch cut this time now you saw that these guys do not hesitate to take off I hope they don't all go like that I think I see him up front there. Yeah. I'm going to put him down. And this way I can unravel. And if he runs, hopefully he'll stay within the enclosure. Yeah, there we go. All right, so there he is. corner little guy Ooh. hard to get that adjusted there he is all right get some light on him so he'll be just fine in there put the lid on that OBT number three. There we go. Take the lid off of that. down there so we don't get a runner and there he goes oh, don't run all right and he went straight into the cork bark there you can barely see his little legs sticking out right there all right so he made himself at home OBT number four. Okay, there we go. Pop that open, open this up. Take him out. I got spooked. <laughs> All 
All right, so there he is. He just ran right out and went right down into the cork bark there. Okay, so that's all of them. All right, so don't fault me for getting spooked. Um, I don't handle old world tarantulas. I know that they're too small to, to penetrate the skin, but it's still a little bit unnerving to know that you have a venomous um, creature that's running on all over you. So um, yeah, I get a little bit nervous about it, but um, you know, it's just respect. I, want, I don't want to get bitten. And even though I know that they are too small to bite me, I still get nervous about it. Um, not to mention my wife and I have a deal when I got into old worlds. It was a thing where she said, if you get bitten, that's it. You know, that's it for me and my hobby as far as tarantulas are concerned. So I don't want to get bitten and it's not something that I'm going to tempt because I love them so much. All right, so this next one is the Brachypelma vegans. And this is New World, so I'm not really too concerned about running off or anything like that with these guys. And this was one of the freebies that I got from winning their drawing. And I have two of these, but you can never have enough. This is commonly known as the Mexican red rump. Oh, and this guy is tiny. Look at that. All right, so you're going in there. Come on, little guy. All right, so he is in his new enclosure right there in the corner. Okay. All right, so these next two are the um, Dolicotheli diamantinensis, commonly known as the Brazilian Blue Dwarf Beauties. And um, these are probably still pretty small too. Um, I know from experience that they are runners. They like to take off, so I've gotta be ready for that. That was my very first experience with them when I unboxed the last ones. Um, as soon as I opened them up, they took off running. So I'm probably going to experience the same here. All right, so here we go. He's already sticking his little legs out. And get him on there. There we go. He's trying to run. He's trying to make a break for it. There we go. Stay there. All right. And these guys are pretty tiny. I think they're a lot tinier than the original ones I got. But these are hatchlings. They just came out. And um, in fact, he delayed shipping. I was supposed to get these uh, last week but they were in mid molt so he wanted to wait until the temperatures got a little bit warmer and that they'd finish molting so that he could ship them and they should be okay so yeah they're tiny little guys and hopefully they will do well for me like the other ones did this is a very hardy species so i'm not too concerned about them not doing well All right, and Dolicothele diamantinensis, Dolicothele diamantinensis number two. Pop that. This one is down at the bottom, I can see. There we go. And it is just fine. Another tiny little guy. I hope he can he'll go straight in and not take off on me. There you go. All right, so that's a quick and easy one.
These next two are two that I picked out and they are old world tarantulas. Um, they are called Augocephalus ezendami and um, they're commonly known as the Mozambique golden baboon or the Mozambique golden starburst baboon. And I fell in love with these when I saw them on a video from Erie Arachnids and Dave had shown one and it was beautiful and I loved the pattern on its carapace um, which really lives up to that starburst um, name there. So they do have a starburst looking carapace and one of them is on this uh, larger vial here and I can see his little booty right there. So let me go ahead and pull that out. I think I need my larger tweezers for this. And I'm assuming they're going to be a lot like the um, OBTs and they're gonna wanna run around. So I'm gonna be careful with them. This one just kinda is sitting there on the edge and he's acting like he wants out. All right, this is kinda tight. Oof. All right, if I'm careful, I might be able to just coax him out because he looks like he's wanting to come out on his own. So let's see if I can maybe put him into here. No, he just went right back in. All right, so this is going to be tough. Let's try it again. It's hard to get a grip on it. There we go. I got a grip. There it is. All right. So he's looking kind of anxious there. He keeps kind of peeking out and going back in. So I'm assuming he's going to want to make a break for it. I got to keep my catch cup handy. Oh, there he comes. All right, little guy, you want to come out? There he is. Oh, it came out nice and sweet and walked across all gentle. All right, so anyway, there he is. Augocephalus ezendami. That's fun to say. And um, you can't really see any of that starburst pattern on it, but they do develop a beautiful, beautiful carapace right there. And I just thought that they were gorgeous. So I decided I wanted to get a couple of those. So there's one. This is a little bit larger. I'm assuming the other one's going to be smaller like the OBTs. All right. Augocephalus ezendami number two. And like I said, this one's probably going to be a little bit smaller. I'm looking at one of these vials here. These little capsules. I might be wrong. It's daylight, I'm surprised I'm not hearing my birds chirping in the background. All right, here we go. And there he is. That's not too much smaller, it's pretty good size. A little bit bigger than those OBTs. All right, little guy, here's your new home. There you go. Well, these guys are pretty chill. I don't have any experience with these, so I've done a lot of research on them, but um, yeah, they're proving to be kind of calm as slings, and you're usually a little bit more spastic when they're slings. All right, I think I'm gonna like them. These next three are New World Tarantulas, but I've been wanting them ever since I babysat them for my friend Brian. Um, these are Brachypelma auratum, and they are commonly known as the Mexican Flame Knee, and they are absolutely stunning uh, tarantulas. Um, they're just beautiful. There's that bright, bright knee that they have, and they're not very readily available. They're, they're actually kind of hard to find. So I was surprised when I saw them on his website and um, I decided that I wanted to go ahead and get some. So I got three of them in hopes of 
hopefully getting a female out of at least one of them and um, I believe they're probably going to be pretty tiny and it does take these guys a little while to grow so I'm going to have them for a little while and yeah they're they're pretty small okay so there you go there's one and it was kind of interesting because my friend um, when he bought his he actually had bought three Gramostola Polkra and one of them just happened to be an erratum so he got one accidentally um, and he loves it and it turned out to be female from what I understand so that was lucky for him because he only had one alright little guy get in there there you go okay so I have one already in if I put the lid on it Rocky Pelma Arata number two This guy doesn't even have any color on him. He's just completely in that light tan color. Shut up, dogs. All right, so let's go ahead and get him in there. Whoops. He took off. There he is. Does not want to go in. There we go. He's in. He, she. All right, there it is in the corner. Kind of hard to see. And Brachypelma erratum number three. And uh, this one's in a larger vial, so I'm hoping that it is going to be a larger one. That would be great. I don't know. Nope, it's tiny. <laughs> All right, there it is. Okay, and I hate these things. They're so tightly packed. All right, so we got them out. He must have run out of those little capsules because he's got this little tiny guy in here. All right. There we go. So that's number three. Get in there, little guy. Did he go? Nope. <laughs> he ran right back in. He likes his little paper towel hide. Meow. All right, there we go. We got him in there. All right, so there's number three. Sit down so I don't smash this. And last but not least is this one. And this one was the one that I was really, really wanting. And the reason for that, and I'm gonna eat a little bit of crow on this one. I did a video on a rehousing of Pisilotheria regalis. And um, I was convinced that that Pisilotheria regalis is a, was a female. Um, and talked about the differences between males and females. And darned if it didn't turn out male. Um, once I rehoused it, I had a cork tube in there and uh, that thing never came out. It stayed within the cork tube. It would grab its prey from outside the cork tube and bring it in there. So I never saw it and uh, then it ended up kicking out a molt and I checked the molt and sure enough it was male. And then it finally did come out and yes, I could see the palpable bulbs on it. So I've got two confirmed males 
mature males and no females to breed them to. So um, I was really happy when I saw on their website, Nature's Exquisite Creatures website, that they were offering two um, adult females or they were offering two females, confirmed females. One was larger than the other. I believe this one's supposed to be about five and a half inches. The other one was like six and a half inches. So the larger one sold and I was fortunate enough to get the other smaller female. So I'm hoping that it will be able to breed. I'm not sure. They assured me that they breed before that they are fully, fully grown. So hopefully that'll be okay. If not, then, you know, that's just my tough luck, but I'll at least still have a female. And, and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a female um, Pisilotheria regalis, also known as the Indian ornamental. So I'm real, real excited about this one. Let's go ahead and get this one opened up. This is a old world species and they are very venomous, uh, medically significant venom, I believe. So I do have to be real careful and I'm not gonna take any chances with this one. So I've got the enclosure ready right here. Um, I got her a nice cork tube set up so she can get nice and comfortable. And then we will hopefully try to breed her. If not, then I'll have to try to find a mature male for her somewhere down the line if I lose this one. Um, but hopefully my chances are pretty good since I have two. So let's open this up. And I can see it down there. All right, I see the booty. I don't know if you can see the booty, but it's down there. So it's face down. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and I will probably unroll it in there. So that I don't run any chances of getting bitten. All right, I'm just gonna pull this out like that. Okay. All right, and I'm not real worried because I got the end closed up there. Ooh, I see legs. <laughs> that was scary. All right, come out. Trying to come out, come out. Okay, it's kind of tricky doing this. Yep. There it goes on its own. Ooh, and this thing is ready to rock. Let's get a look at it. That thing came flying out. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, now you guys are making noise. All right, so there it is. And hopefully I can get that paper towel out of there without spooking it too bad. It's still got a leg hanging on. So I'm gonna put the screen back on and pull it out from the other side. There we go. Ooh, this thing is full of energy. All right, so there she is, and she's pretty good size. I believe she is actually bigger than my male. But man, you can feel the power when she came running out. She's strong. All right, so let me go ahead and seal her up. So those are my Christmas presents and I'm extremely happy. Um, I'm especially happy for getting this adult female. There go the birds. And uh, yeah, I, I, 
I was so bent on getting a female P. regalis that I guess I saw what I wanted to see when I was looking at that male and uh, wanting it to be a female. Um, someone did make a comment that they believed it was male, so you were absolutely correct. And uh, But now I'm happy because I do have a female and I can attempt a pairing. If that does not work out, there are always males that come up. Um, females are always kind of iffy, they're, they're hit and miss. Sometimes people will post a female, uh, a mature female that they're selling. And uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to find a mature female. But you also have to be careful with what you're getting. I did own a mature female at one point. I got it in a trade. I traded a, a boa constrictor for it. And uh, I got it with one of the large Exoterra um, enclosures. And um, when I got it home, I noticed Probably it took me about a week or two before I realized that something was wrong. First of all, um, it was not kept in, in very good conditions. It just had regular dirt on the bottom, actually mostly sand at the bottom of the enclosure. And uh, there were no hides, nothing for it to climb on or establish any anchor points or anything like that. And it, it smelled like cigarette smoke. This person was obviously a very heavy smoker because everything was just saturated with the smell of cigarette smoke. Not that I think any of that had, or I don't know if any of that had anything to do with it, but after about two weeks, I started to notice that it was acting very abnormal. It would not eat. It walked kind of funny, like it was off balance and it couldn't get a grip on stuff. And um, I started researching stuff and found out that it had DKS. And if you don't know what DKS stands for, that is dyskinetic disorder and or dyskinetic syndrome is what it is. And it's a, an ailment that tarantulas get and there's really no known cause for it. People um, speculate that maybe it might have something to do with pesticides or something else. But um, it's just a, a disorder that, that tarantulas get to where they're very disoriented. They might eat, but then they quit eating and it, they have a very hard time walking and keeping their balance and eventually they die, which is what happened to my adult female. So I was very broken up about that because of course I lost a, the boa constrictor in the trade, but not only that, but you know, I lost the female tarantula that I really wanted. So I guess that's why I was seeing what I wanted to see with the uh, male tarantula that I had, male P. regalis. So I'm overjoyed that I have this female. Hopefully I can pair it. If not, I'll do it later on. So before I go, I wanted to give a big thank you to Nature's Exquisite Creatures. Thank you so much, Jerry. This is awesome. I didn't expect to win. I didn't even think about it. And uh, when you messaged me, I was really happy. Um, so yeah. Definitely check out Nature's Exquisite Creatures. They always do an awesome job. I give them a five-star rating. Um, if you have any questions or concern, communication is uh, almost instantaneous with them. I just message them on Facebook and they respond usually within a few minutes. So they're definitely very reputable and very um, they do an awesome job in getting your tarantulas to you safely. Um, if you want to check them out, they're at naturesexquisitecreatures.com and they have an awesome rewards program where you can earn points and get um, percentages off on your tarantulas or a little bit of money off. So they're always willing to do that for you. I also wanted to give a big thank you to um, Exotic Slayer. Thank you so much for sending me traffic. Uh, you don't know how, how much it, it means to me and what it did for me. So I really appreciate it. You sent me some new subscribers. To my subscribers, new and old, thank you so much for supporting me. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy any new content that I have and my old content as well. For those of you that purchased Christmas spiders, I appreciate the support. We had orders from as far away as Germany, so um, I hope you enjoy your Christmas spiders. And once again, thank you. As a thank you to my subscribers, I would like to offer up a free a Christmas spider as a giveaway. And uh, this one is actually unique. It's the only one that we made like this. My wife actually made it. I didn't know what to do with this skull, so she turned it into an abdomen for a Christmas spider, and she used a lot of colorful beads on it and it looks really cool. Um, I actually enjoyed it and I told her that it kind of gave it a Dia de los Muertos feel. So um, that's what I call it, the Dia de los Muertos spider. <laughs> um, so yeah, this one is really nice. I like it and I would like to give it away. So I'm doing a giveaway. If you would like to win this spider, um, all you have to do is comment below, I want a Christmas spider and one lucky winner will receive this Christmas spider. 
So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Redbubble store where you can purchase Tarantula Haven merchandise. Any of the proceeds from that merchandise will go directly to help grow and support this channel. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.